Stay with us um, for this next keynote speaker, Matt Bamforth, a senior consultant at STL Partners, talking digital infrastructure trends in 2023. Hi, Matt, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Tom. Thanks for the welcome. Good to be here. Perfect. I'll leave you to it. Great. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Matt Bamforth, as Tom said, one of the senior consultants at STL Partners. And today, just going to have a bit of a run through of some of the digital infrastructure trends that we've been seeing so far in 2023, especially from an M&A perspective and how we expect them to continue over the next year or so. If you've got any questions about my presentation or want to get in touch about STL Partners and our services, then please feel free to contact me by email or via LinkedIn. I'll just start off by introducing STL Partners briefly. So we are a strategy uh, research and consulting firm, very much focused on the telecoms and technology industries. So I sit in the consulting side of the business doing bespoke consulting engagements for a very global client base, anything from you know, blue chip technology companies all the way down to you know, startup independent software vendors. And then on the research side of our business, they produce a couple of reports a week on a subscription basis to the same kind of audience. So we've been around since 2004, um, growing very quickly, have just under 50 employees now at the moment. And as I mentioned, we have a very, glo a very global client base. So particularly in North America, in EMEA and in Southeast Asia, but we're very focused on growth. So looking at new commercial opportunities, but also the threats that arise from new technologies and helping our clients to identify new revenue streams. In terms of where we have particular speciality, public and private networks, we're very strong, but obviously in the last couple of years, particularly with 5G, we're very strong in networking and in cloud and edge computing as well. Then recently we've been talking more and more about sustainability, IoT, digital service innovation, enterprise ICT, and digital healthcare as well. So across these domains, really where we look at, you know, the software layer platform and the infrastructure layer as well. So these are our areas of speciality and, and I'll touch on a few of them in this presentation. In terms of the consulting team, we provide broadly sort of five different types of service. So M&A work, planning for growth, developing winning business models, building a successful go-to-market strategy and engaging with customers. So on the M&A side, this might be target identification, target evaluation, helping to build a business case, and of course, doing some vendor and commercial due diligence. In terms of planning for growth, we're all about assessing new market opportunities, looking at the potential customers, looking at the partners, evaluating the ecosystems. We're very strong on our case studies, what's best practice. We've got a lot of experience here and doing use case and opportunity prioritization with market sizing as well. In terms of developing business models, well, we always take a look at the key products and services that our client either um, already has or is looking to have in the future, as well as developing revenue and pricing models and building their business case. In terms of building a go-to-market strategy, as I mentioned before, very strong building on partnership strategies and doing sales enablement as well. So helping those sales teams to really give customers what they want. And then finally, in terms of engaging with customers, we do a lot of engagement programs, whether this is webinars or workshops of particular clients or helping a partnership develop their value proposition. In terms of this presentation today, uh, I'll just touch on, on, on three major trends that, that we've been seeing. So the first is relating specifically to the data center market and the strong growth that we've begun to see and expect to see in the Southeast Asian data center market in particular. Then I'll touch on sustainability and data centers. I know this is a panel coming up. It's obviously a very hot topic and wanted to make sure that we take a look at you know, what the investment trends are telling us there. And then finally, I'll touch on the UK fiber market and um, talk a little bit around altnets and, and why we expect some consolidation in the market this year. So there are a few sort of very key reasons why we think Southeast Asia is, is going to have very strong growth in data centers. So firstly, that the market is already expected to grow above the global average so at 16.5% over the next five to seven years compared to just 11.6% globally. So that first point on the left about data sovereignty is really key. As opposed to in Europe, 
where there are very low cross-border regulations on data sovereignty, particularly in the EU, or in the US, where between states, there isn't so much uh, regulation on, on how much data can travel and, and what data can travel. But this is very different in Southeast Asia. There are higher cross-border regulations on data, and this means that there's a higher density of data centers that are going to be built in the coming years, certainly compared to, to Europe or the US. The second trend is really about edge computing. I mentioned this is an area of expertise for us, but data center capacity is just becoming more distributed globally as the demand for edge grows. Uh, this has maybe been a little bit slower than some in uh, particularly the telecoms uh, world that anticipated, but there are applications that, that need the edge, whether this is you know, lower latency for self-driving cars or for AR, VR headsets, or whether it's just reducing uh, the amount of, of backhaul for, for video analytics and things like that. The edge is, is very much needed, the demand is growing, and this means more distribution. And then finally, the fact that data usage is just growing globally. So this is of course driven by AI. I know the previous panel was touching on this, but really a whole host of, of new technologies which consume more data than ever before. Southeast Asia is, is pretty well placed to, to see an even more accelerated growth than, than some other regions. This is mostly due to the fact that technologically it's more immature than Europe or North America. So coming from that lower base, there's more potential for data usage to grow. We think the Philippines is one market which has been exhibiting particular signs of strong growth. So in 2022, in the whole of Asia Pacific, the Philippines saw the second highest number of digital infrastructure deals. So this including fiber and, and towers, et cetera, as well as data centers. And then some big players have announced new facilities opening in the Philippines this year as well. So Digital Edge, Arch Connects, and Edge Connects, all, um, Arch Capital, sorry, and Edge Connects, all announcing new facilities to open this year. But it's not just the Philippines. There have been announcements of other large facilities in other countries. So NTT announcing a $90 million, $90 million investment in what will be Thailand's largest data center. There's a whole host of, of other um, parties who are investing across the region. So we think this is a trend which is you know, up, and, up and running already and will continue to grow um, over the next year or so. Sustainability, I know, has been high on the agenda for, for this particular event, um, but it's something that you know, has only been climbing up the, the agenda for our customers over the last couple of years as well. So we think there are, there are a few independent, strong drivers, particularly in the data center world, uh, for why sustainability is so important. I mean, firstly, investors are actually looking for climate-friendly invest, investments. It's obviously important for them to have a sustainable part of their portfolio. And then, you know, even moves like in the EU recently, they, they tightened the rules on what type of investments qualified as green. So investors are really on the lookout for um, data center operators who can fit this bill. Then secondly, there's the actual customers themselves. And this, of course, means enterprises. Uh, enterprises want to make sure that their supply chains are also pursuing uh, sustainability goals on a par with their own. Um, they follow the same ethos as them. And it means that when they look at their scope one, scope two, scope three emissions, they can be more guaranteed that they're going to score well if, the, um, if their suppliers are, are also supporting them. And then finally, the governmental aspect. So governments, of course, can introduce the regulations themselves, but they've got their own goals to hit. And recently, data centers have particularly been in the spotlight for energy usage and emissions and governments are gonna crack down on this. So there's really um, drivers from a few different directions as to why it's you know, become increasingly a priority for data center operators. But this investment will take a few different shapes and sizes um, influencing uh, the sector. So of course, there's uh, the much larger investments often from you know, sustainable infrastructure investors, but you know, from infrastructure investors in general, so a recent example being Actis acquiring 11 data centers across the Americas. So they're a, you know, a well-known sustainable infrastructure investor and uh, 10 of these actually in Central and South America and, and just the one in Florida, but for $500 million. But a trend that we've also been seeing a lot of, um, particularly in edge computing, is more investment in, in much smaller sort of green startups for, for the data center world. So a recent example being Zero Point, 
who have a memory management solution which reduces energy usage and they raised 3.2 million euros in seed funding. And then finally, we're expecting more joint ventures to, to build greenfield sustainable data centers and another example listed there in Germany between DCD data center developers and Angelo Gordon. The final point that, or the final trends that we wanted to take a look at today was within the UK fiber market. So a little, little bit different to the previous trends, but one which has you know, really been at the forefront of the news um, in the UK, in the telco world. So there's been a, a very well-documented rise in the number of alternative fiber network companies or, or the alt-net. So you know, a few examples here, GigaClear, Netomnia, City Fiber, Hyperoptic, and Community Fiber. So really coming into the market as new entrants and trying to steal market share from the two incumbents, being BC Openreach and Virgin Media O2. But they are coming under increasing pressure and it seems like perhaps the, the number of alt-nets in the market has actually peaked. Existing players are responding as you would expect them to. So Virgin Media O2 secured four and a half billion pounds for a fiber rebuilding joint venture. And BT's chief executive came out with some pretty strong words warning against these alt nets that there simply wasn't space in the market. And you know, it seems from, from the evidence that, that he's not wrong, uh, there's definitely overcrowding in the market. And on the current build out plans of the top 10 alt nets and the two incumbents, each home in the UK would have access to 2.78 fiber connections by 2026, 27. So clearly overcrowding in supply. And more so, it's estimated that if a company is to have a viable business model in their location, then they need at least 30% of the customers here to sign up to them. So clearly, there's not going to be enough room for everyone in the market. But you know, what are the what are the alt nets going to do? How are they going to react to this? We think one of the ways that many alt nets might respond, and indeed some of them, their strategy already has been to target rural areas, so not looking to cross over with where the incumbents already serve, but as less densely populated areas, perhaps there will be less competition. However, the bill costs are definitely higher, the ROI is harder to achieve, and this has only been made worse by high interest rates in the UK and rising deployment costs. So we think what is more likely to see as a wider trend is more consolidation in the market. So a recent acquisition was the seventh biggest alt net, truly, by a French infrastructure fund. And now there are reports as well that Virgin Media O2 are actually weighing up a bid to acquire the largest of the alt nets in the UK, which is City Fiber. They have a lot of crossover in terms of uh, their coverage. So this really would be seen as, as a defensive acquisition. But really, given that there's insufficient customer numbers for all of them to survive, we can probably expect that over the, you know, the coming period, a lot of them might be acquired at a deep discount to book value because there simply isn't space in the market and there aren't enough customers to go around. I hope that was a, an interesting quick fire look at, at some of the major trends um, that we've been seeing in the markets recently in digital infrastructure. But if you head to our website, we've got lots of free resources which you can look at across a wide range of topic areas, uh, including some of the ones that I looked at today. And of course, feel free to get in contact with me in particular via LinkedIn if uh, you had any questions or, or just wanted to learn more about what we offer. Yeah, no, thank you there, Matt. And obviously, uh, to the audience, you can you can put your questions through to Matt or network with him later on in our other session. But I've just got time for one quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, what are the what are the key priorities for uh, data center providers when it comes to building and maintaining digital infra infrastructure? Uh, well, I mean, if that, it depends if it's going to be a, a green a greenfield or or a brownfield infrastructure um, infrastructure project. So. I think what we've seen, obviously, with a lot of the brownfield data centers is that they weren't necessarily built with sustainability in mind. Um, and this is where there's quite a big role for startups like the one that I mentioned. Uh, they can come in and, and try and help data centers to become more sustainable, to become more energy efficient. I think with the greenfield sites, it's increasingly likely now that you're not going to have a new data center built which doesn't have this in mind. Uh, it's incredibly important for a number of reasons I mentioned. Um, actually getting the investment in the first place, uh, the restrictions that you're then put under down the line as well by the government and by your customers. So I think you know, a massive priority beyond those which have been in mind before now when building data centers is that sustainability part. 
and yeah i'm aware there's uh, more presentations on that today so clearly a hot topic of course yeah and i remember you mentioning um briefly about a lot of more acquisitions um to come do you think that that's that's something that may impact on company sustainability as well uh within the data center market yes yeah yeah i think so i mean certainly with the customers that that we've been speaking to um especially you know d- smaller data center operators perhaps if, if they're looking to to be sold on in future, then they know that they have to make sure that sustainability is at the heart of, of what they do now, um, because those companies that are able to show those green credentials are, are going to be far more attractive to investors down the line. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Matt, thank you. Some very um, deep insights there, but um, that's all we've got time for at the moment. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot.